in the heart of Central America, a nation's destiny was being shaped not by its people, but by a single man's ambition. As the world watched, Panama's streets echoed with unrest, and at its epicenter was General Manuel Noriega. But before we dive deep into Operation Nifty Package, if tales of audacity and military strategy intrigue you, shoot that subscribe button and stand with us on this journey through history. Let's uncover what led to one of the most audacious military operations in American history, Panama. The Panama Canal, a testament to human ingenuity, stood as a beacon of global trade and cooperation. However, beneath the surface of this engineering marvel, the waters of political unrest were beginning to churn. As the years rolled on, the Panamanians grew increasingly restless. They felt overshadowed by the colossal influence of the United States, which had a significant stake in the canal. The local sentiment was clear. Panama should be for Panamanians. Protests began to emerge, voices demanding a fairer share of the canal's revenue and more autonomy over their land. Into this volatile mix stepped General Manuel Antonio Noriega. Initially trained by the School of the Americas, he was well-versed in military strategy and intelligence. Noriega quickly climbed the ranks, becoming a key player in Panama's National Guard. His connections weren't just limited to Panama. He had ties that reached as far as the CIA, providing them with crucial intel on leftist movements in Central America. However, as Noriega's power grew, so did his ambitions. The once ally of the U.S. began playing a dangerous double game. He started selling U.S. secrets to the Cubans while simultaneously deepening his involvement with drug cartels. The streets of Panama, once bustling with commerce, began to whisper tales of Noriega's ruthlessness, of journalists disappearing after speaking against him, and of a regime that was growing increasingly oppressive. 1981 was a pivotal year. The mysterious plane crash that took the life of President Torrijos, once a stabilizing figure in Panama, left a power vacuum. Noriega, ever the opportunist, quickly filled that void, consolidating his grip over the nation. His wealth ballooned thanks to his dealings with drug lords and arms traffickers. Panama, which should have been on the path to prosperity, was now in the hands of a man whose intentions were anything but noble. The international community took notice. Stories of Noriega's atrocities began making headlines. The U.S., realizing that their once ally had turned rogue, began imposing economic sanctions. But Noriega, defiant as ever, responded not with diplomacy, but with open hostility. He rallied his people, painting the U.S. as the enemy, and declared a state of war against the superpower. The stage was set. Tensions were at an all-time high. The streets of Panama, which had once celebrated their independence with the U.S., were now bracing for a confrontation with the very same nation. The world watched with bated breath, wondering how this high-stakes game of power and defiance would play out. December 19, 1989. The skies over Panama were dark, but the city below was anything but silent. The tension in the air was palpable. American forces, having decided that diplomacy had failed, were gearing up for a direct confrontation. Operation Just Cause, as it was named, was about to commence. SEAL teams, the elite warriors of the U.S. Navy, were at the forefront of this operation. Their mission was clear yet perilous. Capture Noriega and neutralize his escape routes. Every move was calculated, every step rehearsed. But as with any operation of this magnitude, the unexpected was bound to happen. The first objective was Noriega's private jet. Stationed at Punta Patilla Airfield, this jet represented one of Noriega's potential escape routes. SEAL Team 4 was tasked with this mission. As they approached the airfield, the night was pierced by the sudden roar of gunfire. The airfield, it seemed, was more heavily guarded than anticipated. The SEALs found themselves in a fierce firefight. Bullets whizzed past, and the darkness of the night was intermittently lit by the muzzle flashes of rifles. Simultaneously, SEAL Team 2 had a mission of their own. Their target was Presidente Porras, Noriega's heavily armed gunboat. Approaching stealthily, the team used Draeger rebreathers, devices that allowed them to remain submerged without revealing their position through bubbles. Their goal was to attach explosives to the boat, ensuring Noriega couldn't use it to flee. But as they neared their target, they too faced unexpected challenges. Panamanian Defense Force guards detected them, and a hail of gunfire forced the SEALs to take cover underwater, 
using the very boat they intended to destroy as a shield. Back at the airfield, the situation was growing dire. The SEALs were outnumbered and pinned down. Yet amidst the chaos, stories of incredible bravery emerged. Navy SEAL Don McFall, realizing that many of his comrades were injured and exposed to enemy fire, made a valiant decision. Risking his own life, he moved to rescue his fellow SEALs. Tragically, while pulling a teammate to safety, McFall was fatally wounded. His sacrifice, a testament to the brotherhood and valor of the SEALs, would be remembered and honored in the annals of military history. As dawn approached, the sounds of battle began to wane. The SEALs had achieved their objectives, but at a heavy cost. Noriega's escape routes were effectively neutralized, but the dictator had one more trick up his sleeve. He sought refuge in the most unexpected of places, the Vatican's embassy. This move, a masterstroke of strategy, placed him in a sanctuary where American forces couldn't touch him without causing an international incident. The once defiant General Noriega, now cornered, had played his final card. But how long could he hold out against the might of the American military and the pressure of international scrutiny? Outside the Vatican Embassy, American forces were faced with a unique challenge. They couldn't storm the building due to diplomatic protocols, so they had to think outside the box. The streets surrounding the embassy became a theater of psychological warfare. Large speakers were set up, and the deafening sounds of rock music echoed through the night. But it wasn't just music. The American forces used other tactics to increase the pressure. Bright lights were shown onto the embassy, ensuring that darkness wouldn't provide any respite. The intention was clear. Make the environment inside the embassy as uncomfortable as possible for Noriega. Inside, the atmosphere was tense. Noriega, once the unchallenged ruler of Panama, was now a fugitive, cornered and isolated. The papal ambassador, Monsignor José Sebastián Laboa, played a crucial role during this standoff. He held frequent discussions with Noriega, trying to persuade him to surrender. Laboa painted a bleak picture for the general, highlighting the futility of his resistance and the inevitability of his capture. Reports suggest that during this time, Noriega was deeply introspective. He was often seen reading the Bible, perhaps searching for solace or guidance in its pages. The once mighty general was showing signs of weariness. The constant barrage of noise, the diplomatic pressure, and the realization of his dwindling options were taking a toll on him. The turning point came when the Vatican intervened directly. After receiving complaints about the noise and psychological tactics, direct communications between the Vatican and President Bush led to a change in strategy. The loud music and aggressive tactics were dialed down. Instead, diplomatic channels were worked more vigorously to find a resolution. Inside the embassy, Laboa's efforts began to bear fruit. Through a combination of spiritual guidance and hard diplomatic talk, he managed to convince Noriega of the bleakness of his situation. The general was running out of options, and with each passing day, his position became more untenable. It was clear that the end game was near. The once defiant general who had challenged the might of the United States was on the verge of capitulation. The world watched with bated breath, waiting for the next move in this high-stakes diplomatic chess game. As the sun rose on January 4th, Panama was a changed nation. The once untouchable General Manuel Noriega, who had held an entire country in his grip, was now in custody. The streets, which had for so long been filled with fear and uncertainty, began to buzz with hope and the promise of a new dawn. Operation Nifty Package wasn't just about capturing a dictator. It was a testament to the spirit of the Panamanian people and the international commitment to justice. The operation highlighted the lengths nations would go to ensure that power doesn't remain unchecked. The world had watched as the might of the American military, combined with strategic intelligence, brought down a regime that had seemed invincible.